Performer Training Systems, Youth Conditioning Specialist Level 3 with the International Youth Conditioning Association. Um, today I'm just going to show you some examples of uh, um, exercises and strength training for our core. And we're talking about, uh, when we're talking about strength for the core, we're talking about strength in the core to increase performance and to reduce injury potential, lower back, and believe it or not, it can affect your knees and your, and your, uh, your young athlete's uh, shoulders as well. Um, I think there's a lot of misconceptions still about the core and what its, main, what its functions are because we still see trainers and coaches doing traditional sit-ups and crunches, side bends, and a lot of twisting that's occurring through our lower back. When we think about the major function of the core, its major function is to prevent motion. Okay, and what motion is it? Is it uh, is it preventing? Well, it's preventing that exact flexion. We don't want any flexion lower back because, to be honest with you, the back really doesn't have that much mobi that, that mobility to be doing those movements, and it creates stress through the spine in that lower back. Number two, we want to we want to prevent this hyperextension where you're seeing compressive forces in the lower back. So once again, we're concerned about safety, but also if we lose that integrity through the core, your athletes are not going to be able to produce um, as much power, speed um, that they're going to need for their athletic movement. Uh, number three, we want to prevent lateral flexion. As you can see, you don't see a lot of this occurring in sports. I mean, if we're talking about looking at athletes running, we don't see them running and, and flexing side to side. Um, do we have some lateral flexion ability in our spine? Sure, but not that much. Do we need to train it? I don't think we do. Um, once again, I said we want your, the major function of the core is to prevent motion. Uh, the fourth one is we want to prevent rotation through that lumbar spine. A lot of athletic movement occurs, if you see any rotational movement, it's occurring through the hips and the upper back. The stability of the core is allowing that to happen with explosive power, efficiency, and allowing your athletes to be fast, powerful, and, and agile. So um, when we're talking about training for uh, performance and injury reduction, we're talking about prevention of motion. So today I'm going to show you uh, four categories that we uh, of, of, of core training that we do with our young athletes. Um, we also can include the hips as part of the core, but I'm not going to cover that today. I'll cover that in my next column and next video. Today I just want to focus on our uh, diaphragm, pelvic floor, or the muscles of the, of the core, which we're talking about, diaphragm, pelvic floor, internal, external obliques, transverse abdominis, which if we think about the transverse abdominis, think about it coming from each side of the spine and across. It actually inserts at the back of your lower back here. And think of it as a we're not flexing. We're stabilizing through the core. Same thing is going to happen when we're preventing hyperextension, those compressive forces through the, uh, we want to prevent those compressive forces through your lumbar spine. Number two, we want to, again with compression, we want to prevent that rotation through your lumbar spine as well because again you're going to get, uh, you don't have that much uh, degrees of rotation uh, in the lower back and remember it's major function is to prevent that rotation, not only protect the spine but also be able to produce power and movement as well. And then we want to prevent lateral flexion. Um, so those are the four categories I'm going to cover. And you're going to see, uh, you're going to see the beginner is going to be more static in nature. Intermediate, we start to add a little bit more dynamic movement to it. And then in the advanced uh, progression, you're going to see uh, a lot of stuff on the feet, whether with medicine balls, producing more power and rotational power through the hips and the upper back, really working on that dynamic stability through the course of your athletes, start to get that neuromuscular training and understand how to transfer power and rotational power through the core into the hips and the upper back. And this is where we're truly going to see how it's going to affect their performance positively on the field, as well as their in, as well as uh, injury reduction as well. So uh, these these are important strategies for them to be able to produce speed and power, whether it's swinging the bat, pitching the ball, spiking a ball, uh, uh, a soccer player playing and kicking the ball, or protecting the goal, having to react to the ball. Um, and, and, any sport, football as well. So think of any movement in sports, you're going to see that it requires core stability to produce powerful movement, which is acceleration, deceleration, laterally, linearly, um, taking on opponents and throwing them off you. So there's so many categories that, could, that, that involves core stability and to be able to produce that power that that's why you're going to see it's so important. Okay, so the first motion. category of our uh, core movement is anti-extension. So she's, this is going to be a static movement, a foundation of our anti-extension. So she's going to get a front plank here. 
So the goal here is not to let our body get to full extension like this. So she's just out of extension here, working the anterior part of her core. And the goal here, as you can see, this is a neutral spine, no flexion in the spine, also no hyperextension. So we're not getting that hyperextension in the spine. So this is our first static movement of a foundational part of the uh, anti-extension movement for the stabilization. More of a dynamic movement, still stabilization through the core as you can see, but we're teaching her to stabilize while she's actually doing a pulling movement. So this would be a this would be a progression from a front plank, which is more static. This is now dynamic stabilization. Still looking for that neutral spine. Okay, now we're doing lateral or we're anti-lateral flexion. Okay, so we're as you can see here, we're stabilizing through. We're talking about those obliques that we saw on there, external and uh, internal obliques here. So we're fighting, let me do that. So we're fighting this uh, lateral flexion here. So she's stabilizing through her uh, lower back once again. There's no lateral flexion through her lower back here. So this is a, just a s uh, foundational static movement through the lumbar spinal. Now we're doing basically a, a standing version of that side plank. This is more dynamic because now she's going to have to walk while fighting this lateral pull she's getting from this kettlebell. So once again, she's getting the obliques. Also with her glute firing to keep her that weight from letting her laterally flex to the side. So on these, she's just going to walk. It's a farmer's walk. It's an offset loaded farmer's walk. She can do so here on shoulder overhead. So we can do a lot. We can advance this in a lot of different ways. Windmill here. We're fighting lateral flexion still through core stability. So she's going to go down into it. You can see there's absolutely no lateral flexion going through her spine. There's going to be more hip flexion here and a nice stable core. She's getting into that lateral as she's getting into the windmill here. Okay. So she get into those hips. There's no lateral flexion. Now we're still doing lateral We're flexion. doing anti-rotation. We don't want any rotation for the lumbar spine. Go. She's going to push, pull. We're looking for no rotation. She's fighting that. All she's doing is we're teaching her to push, pull through the core without any rotation through the core here. And good. Okay, that's good. So we want to, on this movement here, as you can see, she's only moving the arms. We're fighting that twisting motion. The better we get an anti-rotational movement through the core, the better we're going to be able to transfer force so when you're seeing movements through swinging, kicking, uh, throwing movements like that. It's all anti-rotation through the core. That usually is going to come from the hips and our upper back. This is basically transferring the power back and forth to allow us to increase velocity and power flow. Once again, we're getting those hip flexors along with our obliques working again. Pull it in. She's always going to pull in a little more. She's going to bring them in deeper. Here we go. So we're looking to keep a neutral spine. So now she's getting her... Uh, obliques working here as well as she's getting those hip flexors working as well, teaching her to keep this neutral spine through her lower back. I'm not afraid. I'm yeah. Not afraid. Take the it's been a ride. Everybody, I guess I had to go to that place. <laughs>